Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> we are here and once again it is our great pleasure to be in your reality. We're hesitant to come into the quietude that you have uh, mastered. Thank you, Kalista, for playing the sound balls and for stabilizing the inner world. Do you feel it, people? Yes. Now, this is a big contribution because the inner can mirror the outer and the outer can mirror the inner. And as we've been discussing with you this weekend, uh, you are in volatile times. Times of conflict, times of change, times of dismantling, revolution. Uh, the title we are using are Wild Card Times. This is it. Uh, it's not going to go on forever, but the next few years uh, we'll be having various uh, levels of symphonic involvement in terms of intensity. When you are able, as a group, to quickly create such peace and quietude, and to use, as our vehicle helps you, to use the imagination to ground, to clean, to balance, and to activate, you may think that you're not doing that much. That's because, again, you can't see the effects of your thoughts and your energy fields. But that was pretty big wow there. The peace that you created went all over the world. Sedona is a place with many ley lines and energies that meet. This is why we enjoy working here. We appreciate the job that Chet and Kalisa do each year to bring us here. But it sets the year in motion and it is a transmission portal. So, good. Congratulations. Now we will proceed with some fun. Uh, you are making good progress. You have uh, graciously this weekend taken the good news with the not so good news. Uh, you've learned already what works for you and what does not. And you learned about the big D word, discipline. That in your own way, if you set up small disciplines, a little bit here, a little bit there, it's like housework. You pick up this, you sweep this, you do these dishes, the house stays clean. You put it off, you put it off, you put it off, you live like a slob. Same thing with the body, all right? Little discipline here, fixing the body, opening the shoulders, thinking about the spine, checking the chakras a few times a day just to see, dropping a grounding cord, checking that aura, playing with the imagination. This is it. This is what you are here for. You are not here to dribble balls or to push buttons. That's a sideline. But you are here to show that the body can awaken. Now, there are going to be many people who are going to figure out how to get the best miles per galaxy and beyond with the body. And this is going to be quite a, a demarcation point for humankind. Yes, there's all of the Illuminatis and the globalists and different people who are studying the papers and the, the world leaders sitting around chess boards and game boards. How much more blatant than they can, can they be with letting you know this is one big game that they are playing? And they have to let you know because you do create your reality. However, by the way, there are other factors who are creating around and for you. And this is why you must wake up. Using your power then dismantles the power of others. And it's time, as we've said, for you to throw off the burdens that you have been carrying as a people. And these burdens really became, they go up and down. But they are growing greater and greater because of the double-edged sword of the electronic world. Yes, you can become informed. But if these technologies had been presented to you by extraterrestrials and they are allowing you to be informed, obviously they do not feel threatened by you becoming informed because what you are becoming informed over won't do you any good. 
You can surf the internet all you want, but you are just looking at data, looking at data. We want you to use the internet, as we said yesterday, wondering, <clears throat> activating, allowing abilities to come forward so that you are healthy, you are vital, you are feeling good. Remember, this is just a bit of review to emphasize why we work with you, what our goals for you are. We are not here to, to deal with millions and millions. Our words will reverberate out. But it is always a self-selected smaller number who's willing to work with the body and finding the body to be the most exciting thing. And you know, when you are in the ethers and you, before you are being born and things, sometimes you look forward to the things that will unfold in any given era. And being that time has a simultaneous nature, meaning that all things happen at once except they are separated by little cells and cubicles of, of, of reality, you know what you are incarnating into in general. And you have an idea of the cultural parameters, the challenges, the victories, and you grow up into it. And almost all people are excited about coming back to uh, having a body. And then they get here. And they get distracted. It's a lot of work, people. A lot of work <clears throat> to get the right timeline, to get the right bloodline that will augment your abilities, to connect up with your colleagues. And it's all possible in the late 20th century, early 20th century Earth. 1800s, 1900s, it was a little more challenging. A lot more organization had to happen to create flutterings of synchronicities to bring people together. People lived in small communities, villages, towns, and they never left. So they incarnated in groups and you were with that group. Today you have credit cards and airplanes. And so that you can find your tribe, your colleagues, anywhere in the world. This is a window. The internet is a window. The electronic world, the freedoms, the ability to move around the world here and there, these are all a window in time. And this window flew wide open to compel you to go out and search into the world at the beginning of the time we call the nanosecond. We called it the nanosecond because it was 25 years of accelerated energy and it flashed by so quickly along the lines of time. We used to say one had to have the coordinates and be able as even extraterrestrials to locate you, to locate and be here in that slice of time. Oh, lots of visitors can find Earth. It's not a problem. Enter the solar system, it's there. Number seven, yes, number seven, seven in. However, do you think that when visitors come in, you conclude they're automatically going to end up in your current now? You do, don't you? Yes. You assume that, because that's where you are. Visitors can come in, and they are. And there's lots of visitors around the Earth. If you picture the Earth like the hole in a donut, the visitors are all in this belt around uh, Earth and a little bit beyond. But you know, some of them can't find your now. Does that intrigue you? Yes. Good. <laughs> That's what we want, get you fired up and going. They can't find your now because there are certain qualifications, certain coordinate points, so they're out there. But all time is simultaneous. This attributes to some extent to artistic renditions from what you call the Renaissance era, where craft are painted in. <coughs> It attributes the Chinese, the Middle Easterns, the Indians, having pictures and ships coming down. Many a ruler was taken for a ride in craft. 
it has been rumored and reported, it is true, that uh, some of your presidents were taken up in craft uh, and given a buzz around here and there just to show that things are really real. So this simultaneous time issue is going to become more prominent in your understanding of reality. Do not over fuss yourself uh, like a dog worrying a bone about the simultaneous time. It is intellectually a conundrum. But biologically, it is valid as an experience. As we said to you yesterday, in these wildcard times, you are going through deep advancement, quick bridge making of synapses firing and new neural networks being built. When you are racing around and leading a busy life, eating junk food and, and overindulging and all the acid making things that are so good, it's not that easy for your body to develop new neural networks. You are actually making yourself a candidate for, let's say, electromagnetic collapse. That will be a new disease that will be understood once the medical people come to agreement that you are electromagnetic beings. You are chemical beings. You are a combination of, of types of, of energy. And they all need to work in integration and understanding for healing. Yesterday we said chaos uh, and that deceit uh, creates chaos and confusion. And this is a way that you are encouraged to go into chaos and confusion and that it keeps you from turning your smarts on and figuring things out. And if you want to get out of the game, uh, you have to turn your smarts on and go to a new level. So it's very exciting. Actually, it's one of your most thrilling lifetimes in, along the lines of time. <clears throat> And uh, if you accepted that, and that you're not wearing crowns, and you don't have big jewels on you, but you have uh, something that is beyond all of that, use it. So let's see what else is important. The outer is mirroring the inner, the inner is mirroring the outer. Each one of your personal victories ripples outward. Your biggest challenges, let's see, let's talk about the planet Saturn. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Uh, the inners, Jupiter is considered sort of the book marker for the inner. And these inner planets, again Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, they each have effects on the collective, they have the effects on the individual, uh, more pronounced and differently. So when you move outside that belt, you go then to uh, the planet Saturn the big one with rings, in case you don't know uh, your cosmic uh, counterparts. And you know the Anunnaki, they named the planets for themselves. The god Anu, which planet is his? Who knows? There's a clue, figure it out. Who, what is it? Oh, very good. All right, you get a gold star there. Who was said that answer? Dylan. Dylan? All right, good. Uh, Uranus, yes, there you have. U R A N U S, right in there. Oh, hidden in plain sight. <laughs> how clever you humans are to recognize what you've already looked at for how many years? And now it starts to make sense? Figure out this. If you are decoding things that have always been there, the tidal wave is coming this year to push you to read symbols to see through things, to see things you've always seen, but then the knowing is going to come up to fill in the blanks. It's challenging. It's mentally confusing. It can be destabilizing. Do not think you are losing your noodles unless you start acting really weird you are. <laughs> That's an indication. But otherwise, if you are getting messages or hearing things or seeing things, if it's voices, turn them off. If it's voices, you are having hormonal endocrine problems. 
and the endocrine system, the hormones are all out of whack and they are allowing something else to come in. So there needs to be a quietude uh, in nature, stabilizing, and you are in charge and you make a boundary and you can create guardians. Years ago, uh, our vehicle was feeling, a uh, long, long time ago, harassed by um, beings that often go after people in the sleep state. They go after you when you are dreaming. You go after your body, and some of these beings see you are glowing because you are running light through the body, you are awakening, you are a walking, sleeping advertisement for who you are. And if you're not that smart and you're big, kind-hearted and open and naive, uh, they like to come, these, some of these dark uh, troublemakers, to uh, attack you while you sleep. And uh, they may press on the chest or attempt to stop your breathing, and they very seldom do great damage, but they give you a big wake-up call so you know they are very real. So our vehicle said, enough of this, as she does so well. I'm going to create two guardians, two big dragons. And their job is to be at any bed I am sleeping in. And I will name one A and one Z. And they will cover everything, A through Z. And they will protect me always when I sleep so that nothing can get me. It was simple, very simple, over 25 years ago. Very effective. Sometimes it's simple that works the best, especially when it comes to conjuring, abracadabra and using your imagination to declare how you want things to be. The imagination is unlimited and endless in its resourcefulness to provide you energy to dictate or create or imagine anything you want. And unfortunately, all of your society is organized to pull you away from daydreaming. Remember being in school and slipping off a little bit in those other brainwave frequencies and maybe if you were in a mean school, they'd come by and smack your knuckles and say, you're daydreaming. And yet without daydreaming, the brain does not rest. The brain cannot go like a motor all the time. It needs to Relax. You have a term, it's called space out. Yes? <laughs> yes. The brain likes this. Not all day, every day. But it likes periods of rest where it's a, sort of on idle rather than being forced to, to be at, at the, uh, what you call, NASCAR races all the time. So these are simply reminders for you. You each have your own stories. Uh, you have challenges that are individual. If you are struggling or you are in mysteries and can't quite figure out what's going on, remember there are many gifted people on the planet and your story is within you. And it, astrology reading, some body work, some good numerology, all of this can give you insight, especially if it's from someone that you do not know. If you keep going to the same people and they know you, it's more difficult. They may tell you truths that are important, but when someone does not know you, they may tune in to some of the other reasons that you cannot see for your challenges. So, these are some points of consideration. Sounds like a lot of activity up the hill there at the airport and the helicopters, but we'll work around them. All right, folks, today is 2-2, two, two, Ma, 1-5. That's a code. You know it. And uh, we are in spring. Things are going to happen. Let's start with some brilliantly, in, brilliantly shared insights. How's that? Yes. Who would like to step into that role? Peace, this is Corey. Corey, welcome. Thank you. I was wondering, is it really necessary for humankind to receive a cosmic jolt like the nanosecond in order to evolve in consciousness, or would we eventually evolve on our own? The cosmic jolt is like a circus come to town. Now, if you grew up in a small town and there was never a circus, you would still live. But if a circus came to town, and it was only once, 
and you were allowed to go and really as a child explore the joy of something like that that was different, it would be pivotal to you because it would be special. In the course of human development, one could say that the nano uh, was tracked by the Anunnaki. They are the ones who know the cosmos. Others of us do, but the Anunnaki have set up your timing mechanisms, your calendars. They have set up the infrastructure of Earth. And we will remind you that at the end of the nano, that accelerated period from 1987 through 2012, the Anu knew that at that time, everything would go faster and faster. It was the last 25 years of a 5,125 year cycle. And all of you were incarnated through various junctures in various cultures throughout that calendar, 5,125 years, beginning in BC, ending in your now. And so those lifetimes that you lived were sort of simultaneously picked so that you would be in proper position to take a massive leap in putting things together in the nano and beyond in the changeover years. Now, Corey says, would you have moved forward anyways? Oh, yes. Acceleration, or let's say evolution in your terms. It's a way of understanding reality. It is not true that apes evolve into humans. In other words, Kiki the gorilla has no shot at becoming a, a, a woman or a man. Impossible. So monkeys do not change shape. You say you are told oh, that all dogs come from wolves. They may have, but uh, there's a little bit of tweaking in there, so to speak. Have you ever seen a big shabby, shaggy uh, sheepdog? Or uh, a, a yeah, thinking of that dog that's big that wears the, the, the whiskey around its neck, Saint Bernard. Or you look at these little Shih Tzus and Poodles. There's obviously someone's constantly working with the genetic energies. You have the genetic engineering has never stopped on this planet. It is part of design. So the humans or the beings that were here, let's say you are talking about yourselves, uh, after the survivors, the human survivors after the big cataclysm of about 13,000 years ago. Some say it was Noah's flood and that the ice caps slipped. It is certainly true that ice caps slip. It's happened in Canada. We know we have a few people from Canada here. And uh, when it happened from Canada, there were ice fields that were miles high, miles. And it is said that the tops of these ice fields were covered with water as things started to melt. The ice, miles high of ice, picture it, remember it, cracking. Have you ever heard an ice cube crack when you pour a little water on it? Magnify it to almost all of Canada. Got the picture? And then it starts to crack. It only cracks because it's getting warmer and warmer. And the water then is seeping through the ice and it separates it all. And then what happens? A deluge. It is said that the coastline prior to, let's say, 13,000 years ago, that would be 11,000 BC, that the coastal regions were 400 feet further out Picture it, remember it. This is why you have indications of animals uh, being flash frozen with food in the mouth. It was big, big, big things have happened to the planet throughout its millions of years, billions of years of, of, of uh, existence. Which, again, the ones that affect you the most would be the 
more recent ones. And even though the Anunnaki's have been here the last 500,000 years, they themselves saw ice ages and retreating, and they adapted various places, various locations. But again, they had the moon to see what was coming. Now, back to Corey's question. Without the nanosecond, meaning if your solar winter sun did not have an alignment with the galactic center, would you have be in the position that you are in today? No, 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 no. The Anus knew and they predicted long ago that there would be this alignment and many cultures saw it. They, some, they all have different names for it, the Golden Age, the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Tibetans, the native cultures, the, the Australian Aboriginals, all over the world uh, people were told and taught that there would be a changing of things coming. And of course everyone projects on what they think it is and no one is quite correct. So this acceleration, as we have suggested, happens at various junctions. And it draws individuals to come back because it is a event when solar transmissions are in alignment, especially with galactic center. So that takes care of that. And it was tracked because when there are alignments from the galactic center, the transmissions are very powerful and they create new eras. They transmit things that Anunnaki cannot control. Anunnaki do not own galactic center. And beings of high value and repute can utilize the galactic center to transmit, as we said, radio waves, uh, gamma waves, and these come directly to the sun and then to you. And this is why the chemtrails are out there to prevent some of the, the transmissions from the sun. It's so involved. It's all a part of games and evolution. And all the participants learn. Even the plants and animals learn. If the animals don't like what, the craziness of what is happening on the earth, it's a little bit easier for them to simply walk a different path into a parallel world of which there are many in the natural world that has a greater quality of life. And the animals do this all the time. Sometimes they get scared and they get caught in a world and they get killed because their fear overcomes them. And all creatures have a type of fear. All, all life forms experience some range of emotional intelligence because it is through emotional response that you read reality. So now evolution. You are quickened. And as we were saying, this is part of, of Enki's gift. Enki had to fight for his rights and he's messed up uh, at times very big. They all have. But Enki uh, was pretty smart and he was able along with his son uh, Thoth, Hermes, uh, who they're all same characters, Ninus Zida. Uh, these, they know how to play the numbers. You have a term like that. It means they can bet, they can gamble, but they know what they're doing. And this is what's firing off now. Things that Enki sort of left in the DNA that would allow humankind to slowly, but quickly, the nano years and beyond, almost evolve before their eyes. And Enki did this so that the humans would break out of the Anunnaki psychosis. Enki did not know how to stop some of the madness that is going on. And his sister, someone brought up the other day, Nin Ma. She is the peacemaker, the great mother. And so together they were the, the tweakers, they were the, the geneticists, a little bit other help. And that's what's firing off within you. And they set it up, Enki set it up, so that it would fire at that calendar, the end of that calendar. And that calendar was established with his son, uh, Ningish Zita, through the Imayans, outside of the Middle East. You follow? Separate separate hemisphere. 
he knew that by viewing simultaneous time, this is how prophecy works. This is how prophecy works. The Anus are stuck in time, but some of them can escape it and view it. You are stuck in time, and many people on earth really believe they're stuck in time. But you are learning that you are not, and that you have not yet figured out how to look at it and look at all the different time tracks and figure out what they are. But just because you can see a time track does not mean that time track is going to cross your path in a reality. It is complex. Now, Enki and his cohorts who wanted to help humankind release some of their trauma from the last, let's say, 12, 13,000 years. The calendar was set and marked. It was also set into the subconscious layers of humans so that you would know when to come back, when to be here, and when your investments in lifetimes over the last 5,000 some odd years would be put to use. And it's the now. And then you're here, and you prepared for it so great, and then you are now in the field, and it's confusing. Just like it is for people who train for anything, sports, glamour, war, then you go out there, or music, then you have to perform. And it can be confusing. You can get stage fright. You can forget the notes. You can forget why you are here especially with so many distractions. So that's a bit of a, a way of understanding it, Corey. And there was an acceleration, of course. Uh, 13,000 years ago would have been half of a great year, a great year being 26,000 years. 13,000 years ago, there was major planetary destruction. There are those who are feeling that you are in a full moon to that time, in opposition, in the great year. And could you recreate some sort of system reset? Lots of options. We are working on the option where you are going to fulfill your smarts and create a probability that stabilizes Earth, values the living library, and finds a way to peacefully negotiate and help heal the Anunnaki psychosis. It's not so big of a task, is it? <laughs> Good, just so that we're all on the same page. All right, over this side, who has a question? Yeah, this is Cindy. Cindy, yes, welcome, and what's your question? My question is, last night uh, the vehicle asked us to watch our dreams and when I got home I actually had a waking dream of a, 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 a glass shattered completely shattered and the how did you feel about it I felt it was a it was a sign good of and course it's a sign but how did you feel when you saw the glass shatter what was the initial feeling in your solar plexus third chakra area um, it was um, terror Terror, or that's what we're looking for. Now, before you go further, people, when you want to interpret something, you look to see your initial feeling. That's why if you sleep and you wake up in the morning and you want to know something, you check the belly area. This is the feeling area where you can access the body's intelligence that is going to be separate from what you think. The body is smarter than your thinking process most of the time. And so you will get a signal here about what the symbol is about or your response to the symbol. Now proceed, please. So the word um, shatter has come into my uh, has come to me several times in the last few weeks. In the in the previous few weeks. In the previous few and weeks. And what would be your solar sign? This the astro of your sun. Uh, Pisces. Your Pisces. Uh -huh. All right. We just look to see you. Different people receive information in different ways. Pisces is very psychic, 
and you have Chiron in Pisces, the wounded healer, and Neptune in Pisces. Now affecting everyone on the psychic level and the karmic level, deep, deep, deep. Please continue. Okay, so recently in my family there has been one young boy who's seven who was molested by a neighbor boy. And so there's been a shattering of our of all of us in, in terms of what it feels like inside. And that is a shattering of how you thought reality was going to be. Yes, and, and also one of the things that was said to me was the shattering of innocence. The shattering of innocence. So you had an example of it in your family with a young member being sexually abused by a neighbor. Yes. And we'll stop for a minute here and comment on this part of it. People. Have you figured out that TV and the internet contribute to the one million percent increase? Did you hear that correctly? Yes. One million percent increase. No one has ever used that term before, a million percent. Increase in sexual abuse on this planet. And who started the sexual abuse? the honors. And so can you see how all of their influencing is coming to the surface in a very disturbing way? And so their control over you is being shattered and you are being shattered in your reality about what you think things are. On a good level, the shattering is a sign that you are becoming more psychic. Please continue. So, um, thank you for saying that. Uh, the, the sexual abuse was actually from a boy who was one year older than he was. So, an eight-year-old to a seven-year-old? A eight with a seven-year-old, but it had been going on for two years, so um, one was five and the other was six. So, the six-year-old... This is very brave of you and kind of you to share this so that people get what's going on. Please continue. So, the, the boy... And, and it's interesting that you said right away the thing about the media because the boy was showing porn, you know, on his iPad to uh, this other little boy. And then they were doing what all people do, little or big, mimic. Yes. Remember that. Yeah. You are all mimickers. And you have been attempting throughout the last 500,000 years to mimic and emulate the Anunnaki. This is why everyone likes jewelry and gold, because the Anunnaki valued gold and they wore it, and so people feel if they wore jewelry, and wore gold jewelry in particular, then they were mimicking the Anus. Please continue. So my question to the peas is this, where, when, you know, I also when I, when I saw the shattering of the glass, it also felt like the shattering of DNA or the shattering of something that, that we've been shattered as humans. And so I want to understand where the healing is going to take place. Is it within the earth? Is it where, where can we heal these sorts of shatterings? Because they're all pieces to try and pick up this glass that just shattered. It was like millions of pieces to try and find them all. It would be impossible to put them together. So that's my question. What shatters? Can, is, it shatters when it fragments so much. It means one thing. If it breaks in two or three pieces, oh, you have super glue, yes? Mm -hmm. And you can fix things if they are little cracks or, or not too bad. But when something really shatters, it means it is not meant to be put back together. Do not even think of putting it back together or going back to the way things were. Because it shattered because the way things were was an illusion of being something good and cozy. And on the good side, that when people do things that are harmful to themselves, in today's world, it's going to be faster and faster for exposing. The exposing is going to happen on the high level and the Already Mr. Clinton's being looked at for, is he hanging out? Why is he hanging out with world-class pedophiles? 
Why is Prince Andrew hanging out with world-class pedophiles? Why does Hillary have her own secret uh, server uh, and her own secret uh, type of uh, email so that uh, no one knows uh, what kind of sex slavery thing is being run around the planet? Everything's being shattered. It has to. If you look at what our vehicle drew here, the picture of the simple cross, it is the zodiacal circle, and she just drew the cardinal cross. At the top is winter, and that is where Pluto is. Dismantling, destroying, dissolving, breaking down, shattering, if you will. And Uranus, in Aries, in the sign of spring, in the sign of a new beginning. Uranus, the revolutionary higher mind, affiliated with Aquarius. Enki sign, the water pourer. In the highest level, it is the awakening of humankind in a revolutionary manner. Not people at Ferguson, misery, destroying shops and being angry. That's the very low, low level that is instigated, and that's what the Anus want. Chaos and confusion in the streets, race, riot, separation, no one trusting anyone. Uranus says, Enki's gift is within you and the timing from Enki he's a timer oh no one knows time like Enki and little he's not so into it he's into commanding <laughs> and so Enki is the surgeon the precision engineer you add time to perfection we are simply helping out explaining describing as best we can and don't think by any means that we came in knowing all of this we had to learn as well and we've learned from you, and we do have different experiences and vistas of reality uh, that you do not and cannot have, because you do not exist as we do. We don't exist as you do, so we are a meeting, a long planned meeting. And many of you knew that we agreed, along with others, to help you through these times. You looked for us, and we appreciate it. We look for you. So, what do you think about this shattering? How do you put it back together? You rebuild with new values. And one of the biggest things that's going to come down the pike is that people are going to have to start disciplining their children, stop thinking that they're crystal, rainbow, some kind of great ascended beings that have come on. They're people with a lot of issues. And the more you elevate your children and make them special, 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 the more you create dysfunction for them. And you give kids unsupervised play, and you give them the tools of the gods. Someone asked our vehicle here during the picture fest here, uh, the paper fest, where you were looking at all kinds of things, and you were looking at the picture of the Sumerian configuration carrying a little bucket, the battery, and the... Anunnaki smartwatch from Suma with the Rosetta on it. And what was the question now? Someone said something very important. The Mies. Say it again. The Mies. The Mies, that is what we were looking for. So she said, is this the Mies? Are these the, the, the society building structures? And it's, it's something that they valued. It was devices or, let's say, a configuration based on crystals that utilizing it, all the aspects of setting up a civilization could be accessed. Uh, sometimes they were called the tablets of destiny as well. You think perhaps it would be, oh, open a computer program and there it is how to milk a cow, and there it is how to breed horses, and there it is how to plant corn, etc. That's your world. The Anus were able to bring energy and ideas through dimensions onto your world. As Mr. Chet said yesterday, Many people report that they are in birthing programs with uh, ETs and they do not have the baby through the birth canal and out the, out the, uh, between the legs. It is at some point in the dream state lifted out of the belly. 
right away, bingo, you must begin to understand that, that realities are not all the same. They operate in very different contexts. So, the structures that the Anunnaki have put on your planet, they are being shattered. And to put something like the, pa the Tablets of Destiny or the Mies in the hands of five and six year olds, unsupervised, do you get what's going on? The Anunnaki used to fight over their Mies, M-E. They would steal them from one another. They would, if they had the Mies, they could run the world. And the Mies were guarded, they were special. Only those who had the power and the understanding could utilize them. Obviously, they were codes to build worlds, and these Anunnaki colonizers were careful with these tools. Only the highest ranking Anunnaki were allowed to have them. And they had a lot of, of infighting uh, by pilots and, and inferiors and other members of the family who literally went in and stole these devices from one another, then took off in their, their flying uh, hornets and things. A hornet is considered to be a helicopter. When you hear the ancients use the term hornet, it was helicopter. And they had helicopter type transport back then, just as they had transport that looks very identical to the space shuttle. Anunnaki technology is old and it does not adapt to like your cars. Let's build a new design next week every year. Oh, the Anunnaki find what's work and they stick to it. So now you have the Mies, or these powerful devices, in the hands of young children. First of all, we're going to scold you. And it's all right because our eyes are closed. <laughs> <laughs> you are fools for giving your children the power tools of the Anunnaki. How to solve this problem? Take a power tool away, an Anunnaki power tool away from the child, and you've got the kid from hell, right? Yes. This is your conundrum, people. We cannot solve it for you. You have become subjected to their toys quickly. And they know, in the beginning of the internet, many people reported that it was filled with pornography. <clears throat> And now children go to seek out this pornography and they will destroy their lives. Because they will carry, once they realize, when they are older, what they have done. It's going to be hard to carry that shame around. Protect your children. Do not elevate them to some kind of greatness. They're not great. They're just people who have come here, cute people. You're all cute when you're little. Mm -hmm. And then you get on with it and you start playing with your issues. Mm -hmm. What else do you want to know, dear? Okay, I just wanted to know if there are things in the earth, like herbs or things like that, that can heal. I know herbs do heal, but can heal those places that have been shattered or, or something like that. You know? The shattering is going to continue. And it's happening not just in your family, on your street. This is the breakdown that is occurring across the world. The devastation that's happening because someone turned their back. There are people who walk out the room and recently and they come back in and the four-year-old kills the five-year-old because the mother left the gun on the table. This is the breakdown to show how the people of Earth have lost their ability to think clearly, to put power objects in the hands of young children. And here is the greatness. Once you see that your children are being sexually violated, it is a huge maternal, paternal wake-up call. Now, there is a fellow here, Chris. Are you here, Chris? I'm here. And he is uh, from England. England. And he shared something very important. And we will 
paraphrase it, then we'll give you a chance to say something, Chris. He came up to our vehicle and he said, you know, just about perhaps every day, every week, there's some sort of pedophile scandal that's being hammered in the British press. It's not just Prince Philip, it's all the stuff from Scotland, it's the MPs, it's the child sex slave rings, it's the boys, it's this and this. And he said very graciously that this is what it takes, the vulnerability of children and the violation of children is your greatest value and weakness and it is this that will raise the people up in anger and you are completely correct. Now, someone wants that stuff exposed and you can bet it's not the Queen. <laughs> She's in control and she is a representative of our new empire on earth in, let's say, a visible representation. Yes, she has the Germanic background, but it makes no difference. That blood also is very old with the Germanic giants, etc who once were part of a group that migrated uh, from after Anunnaki destruction, migrated into some of the various uh, conclaves and places inside the earth. And it wasn't until after the flood water receded uh, 13,000 years ago, they didn't come out of the earth until 11,000, 10,000, 12, 8, they started coming out in batches all over the world where they came from in the USA. The inside of the earth has a massive tunnel system. Massive. But that's another story. So the pedophile exposure is painful. And it's going to shake and rattle the Anunnaki establishment through the crown of England. There are people on the inside who have figured this out. And they are going to the source. The other source is Rome. Yes? yes? Yes. And what has been happening in Rome for the last two decades? The pedophile scandal, yes? How to heal this when we say to you that your second chakra, your sexual chakra, is the biggest trouble in being human? Uh, this is why in religions and things they would forbid people to have sex, chastity here, there, everywhere. But you forbid people, they have more and more, and they have illicit sex and very damaging sex. Sex is to be used to make others of yourself and to heal yourself, to have a good time, to laugh, to become intimate, to fly into the cosmos, and to release all those wonderful hormones that make you feel so fantastic after you've had uh, one, two, five, ten orgasms. <laughs> but here's something that you need to understand. Years ago there was uh, a test that was done with people, and they were wired to buttons, and animals had been doing the same thing. And this person was wired to a button, and if he pushed the button, he would give himself an orgasm. In one minute, we are not certain for the statistics, but the button was pushed at least 30 times. <laughs> no impulse control. Do you get it? <laughs> and so sex, the orgasm, people want it. They want whatever happens inside, but they forgot how to take the sacred path to get there. As people, in every incarnation, your sexual issues are always going to be the core of your biggest struggles. You think it's money, but once you've got a roof over your head and you know how to light a fire and cook some food, it always comes down to sex. And so you are looking at a massive, facing a massive sexual confrontation. When will it come down? It's very obvious. Saturn went retrograde uh, last Friday, retrograde in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a big expansion picture. Sag, Sag, Saturn in Sag says you've got to learn some really, really hard lessons between now and 2017 Decembra. This summer, Saturn's going to move back into the late degrees of Scorpio. It is going to be opposite the Pleiades. And so there's going to be a lot of Pleiadian higher value of sexual energy beamed at your world as a standard. 
you don't have to thank us. We owe it to you. <laughs> <laughs> to have good sex, good healthy sex, good sex with love. And so all you watch, they are going to tumble. And you are going to have some very famous names right at the top. And uh, there is a methodical plan to take down the biggest players and to break up this cabal that often uses such sexual ritual magic from the Aleister Crowley days mm -hmm. to create massive group sex, create a vortex of energy, and then the demons come in and the rituals occur. It's not easy to hear all of this. This is a way of understanding what is being shattered and what is coming forward. So Chris, uh, with clear presentation, what could you share with the people that they need to know? But be careful because these are recorded and so lots of people listen. So edit a little, but to give a clue. Say it again, please. Come louder, so it's closer to the mic. If there was one thing that would bring down the political cabal, it was the use of children from magazine. Because he's saying there's one thing that you're going to have to speak louder and come over here because we want it recorded and and it, we know we put you on the spot, but so what? You all came here to be put on the spot. <laughs> They're all saying, "Oh, I'm so glad it's not." I think when you look at if you look at the entire conspiracy, it's a Federal Reserve, nine eleven, all of these different aspects. Nothing gets people's heads turned more and the use of children behind the scenes. Because suddenly it's something where everyone goes, we'll take a lot of crap, but you won't do that when we know about it. With and the so children. In the last year, the uncovering in the English side and on the American side has been the uncovering of these pedophile groups going higher and higher and higher. Jimmy Savile, ministers, MPs. And at first it was just pedophiles, it was sex rings. And now it's coming out that they're murdering children at these events. Whoa. And now it's going to leave another event. And then you have the Jimmy Savile, the people in who he is, was a big charity worker. And this is the independent was, was he supplying children to the royal family? So suddenly... And wasn't he made a sir? He was. He was a great friend of Prince Charles. Well, if you are made a sir, then obviously you are doing a lot of service for the Arnus. And he was in charge of some of the mental hospitals and all of these things and the orphanages so that's when they were using children so that he could get rid and not know about it. And now suddenly it's all coming out. He was sort of our uh, Mr. Rogers. Correct. And Andrew. it was suddenly a big shock that oh, he was into this. And people like David Icke have been saying this for 20 years. He is one of the handlers. And, and suddenly, even the Express went, how did David Icke know about this 20 years ago? So suddenly there's this shattering of the illusion of who these people are. Where it gets interesting is when you realize that the Bushes are Windsors and they're also involved. And so the House of Cards can finally start to come down. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <clears throat> from across the pond. And Jackie, who is here, uh, we are not going to call on her, but you know, we used to go to Ireland. We've been many times. And years ago, <clears throat> uh, many of the Irish people talked about the, the, it started to really unravel the massive pedophile scandals in Ireland. And they followed the church, they were good Catholics. and just the abuse of Leia and Leia. Mm -hmm. It has not yet happened in the U.S. of A, but you will see it starting now. It will start to really heat up uh, sun uh, on the Pleiades around May 18th, and then it will be the summer of hell uh, squared for some world leaders. <laughs> Chet, did you have something to say? No, but there's a man named Bill who wanted to say something All right. about that. Who, who wants to speak? What, what who is it? My Rick. Rick, or loud and clear, please. What's happening in Canada is we're, we're under uh, missing young girls and women yes. problem, yes. and nobody, there's no accountability yet. So I, I, I feel we have the same thing going on. This has been going on for years, but it is building and building yes. and building. And they're, they're finding that some of the girls are eight and nine years old who are being groomed 
to be working the streets in prostitution, but nobody like in, in your country, in, in England, has been identified as being the groomers. Right. And I'm, I'm, hope, time. I'm hoping that that's coming because it seems to be coming here in the United States and now in Britain, but right now that's not being uncovered in Canada. Let's say this, you are going to see a network that is working very, very diligently <laughs> to start at the top and then they'll work their way down and there's, it's going to be worldwide. And so the shattering, and what's the lady's name here we forgot? Cindy. What is it? Cindy. Cindy. <coughs> Cindy's revelation, and you could hear the, the, the pain in what she shared. This is going to become a global pain. So big. And it's the sadness that people will have to take on is that they have projected their and, and, and trusted people that they never should have. And this is part of Saturn's teaching to give you the bigger picture. Now, when Saturn goes through Sagittarius, you, even it's going to dip back to Scorpio to give you the mother of all scandals, and it still is not going to be a clean sweep. But the dark side, very dark sides will come out. Many people will be retired or terminated or just quit their jobs because they're, they've been covering it up. You are looking at a media scandal extraordinaire and you are looking at the shame of many, many media uh, presenters and they're not going to be exaggerating about which helicopter they are in. You follow this? <laughs> They're talking about big lies, big lies. And let's just say that that was a demo, a little demo with the helicopter guy to show what's coming for everyone who is out of integrity and, and not telling the truth. Saturn in Sag, you, in, by 2017, De Sombra, World religions in many places, not completely, because there are true believers who will not look at things any other way. But the world religions and their credibility will be greatly reduced. It could be by then that already you are going to have space beings uh, acknowledged around. Someone asked, uh, when will the government come forward and come clean? Never because it is too much of a shame. As soon as they show the cat's tail, someone will say, well, why have you been covering it up all these years? And then how do you lie about the lies? And the level of lies is so great that it is almost impossible to unravel them. Therefore, the United States government is not going to be the one to announce, or at least not to say, hey, they're here, so what? More than likely, it's going to come from another world leader, potential to be Putin or the uh, Jesuit Pope because of his scientific backing and his thinking that he can hocus pocus, abracadabra it to a holy thing because of the, let's say, church. But there's no foundation under the church because so many of them are pedophiles and so many of them covered up for the pedophiles. So there's no stability anymore. Cindy's picture of shattering is a psychic indication that the world that you have seen and the belief systems that you have, they are an illusion, as Chris said. Know that the golden age, the new things that you want, may come out of all this, but you can't build on sand unless it's mixed with water and the waves don't come in. But as soon as a wave washes over it, it won't last. Who has a comment, a question, an insight? It's Ruth. Ruth, welcome to your yoga center. Thank you. <laughs> How was your belly dancing? It was good, thank you. Uh, by the way, would you mention anything about belly dance in terms of um, the geometry of that? Uh, in terms of the body? Yes, in terms of the geometry of the moves and the spirals at all. Um, you mentioned yesterday that there was dancing that would 
Oh, they yes. Invite in uh, spirits or energies or entities. From the corn dance, or uh -huh. uh, you have a story about uh, one of the armies marching around Jericho and the walls fell down, etc. Uh, belly dancing, of course, is, is uh, originating from the Middle East, but yet the Hawaiians do their own version of it as well. They look different, but uh, it works the energy of the Kundalini. And once you do anything, yoga or belly dancing, to start uh, sex, you start to raise that energy and work around that area of the body, there's going to be a flowering of energy. And then what do you do with it? This is why children with sex, they're curious. But when children start having, uh, triggering off uh, intense sexual expressions in the body, it's not healthy for a little body. There is a reason that people and animals reach puberty as a signal that the neural system and the cranial system is ready for the power of sexuality. So belly dancing is, uh, let's say, uh, an erotic a stimulant for those who would watch. It was um, designed for the entertainment of men, but also within the woman it stirs up the kundalini. When you stir up the kundalini, you have to direct it for what you want. What else, Ruth? I wanted to just share that in this, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, as a result of some research, Australia has created what they call a Royal Commission uh, to, uh, in, to be a forum for pedophilia in institutions. So there was an organization of women that wanted to have the ability for people who've been involved in it to be, to come forward in a non-legal setting and uh, speak about what their experience has been. So they have actually opened it up to daycares and schools and people would bring a particular institution in front of the commission and then they actually go in and investigate it and have public hearings. And people have been able to come forth and speak about their experience within that public hearing without it being an actual trial or a legal situation. And they're having some success in people being willing to talk that would normally not talk in this situation. So this is one thing that they're doing. This is very, very big. This is like the part of the healing mm -hmm. in South Africa with the apartheid. Now, but this is much bigger. This is huge. This whole sexual misuse of energy, sex slaves, and as it was brought up, Kids are brought to parties, five, six, seven, eight years old. Again, where are the parents? You know, just because you have a body does not mean you know how to use it. And just because you have kids does not mean you qualify to be parents. But you are parents. And so and then these children are killed. They are sodomized. They are forced to have, uh, to perform with each other. Uh, they are forced to take in the genitals of very large men and they are raped over and over again. Where does this abhorrent behavior come from? This is the entities that have been hovering around your world and they have been downloaded and they have invaded your world. The next big aha, and to be truthful, we did think that it would have happened quicker years ago. We were in anticipation of your visual acuity uh, becoming more pronounced. In the nano, it occurred for very few people. And so we realize even though we cheer you on, it is a more difficult thing to take on to enhance your understanding outside the visual spectrum. Nonetheless, it certainly looks that this is uh, a year of necessity. And people will start eventually to be seeing the demons and the dark energies that invade humans through the chakras and start sucking their energy and then controlling the sexual behavior. They love your second chakra. 
and they love the energy the life force energy that comes from arousing and orgasms and sex and they feed off of it and they love getting you in trouble for it and debasing you as if they sneak into the garage and drive your Jaguar one night just for the hell of it or maybe the Jaguar or the BMW or the Mercedes is you this is something we have been speaking about from the beginning Every one of our books has chapters on sexuality and the power of that sexuality. And this is not something to be embarrassed of or to take shame over, but to realize that on a very core level, if you cannot manage your sexuality and control yourselves as people and act with love, you are nowhere near the place of dignity that is required to be a really fully awakened human being. Again, as running a statistical analysis on the planet, it's by giving people the internet, it's pretty easy to tell where you are parked in terms of the second chakra. It's a very, very good thing that you have shared with us, Ruth, uh, and this is going to grow and grow. It's not going to go away. It's not going to be done by next mid-September when Saturn goes back into Sag. This is the shattering of people that is most necessary and they will pull themselves back from people of power. The Brits are warned. You know, the British people take a lot. It's what you call that to stiff up a cheek or something. What is it? Lip, yes. But they will reach their breaking point. And there's a lot of people who were not born in Britain that now have come there. We see that some of the castles, Balmoral, <coughs> Kensington, Buckingham, yikes, the retaliations, once it is discovered, are not going to be pleasant. A probability, of course, but people with the Uranian energy now in full force some people wake up with anger, others wake up with gratitude. Around the pedophile issue is sadness, shame, and real, real anger of core betrayal. Who else has question, comment, Hello. insight? Who is it? Rick. Rick, loud and clear, what's your question? Um, we're talking a lot about the um, sort of, it sounds like the destruction of the, the way things are, but... Let's call it a dismantling of the way things have been. So my question is about the uh, president of Colombia who has uh, declared Earth a sacred place. Mm. And what, what the P's take is on that. Well, the, is that being the, controlled by the Anunnaki? Maybe the president of Colombia read uh, our book, Earth. <laughs> How's that for? Yes, it is translated. Our work is translated in over 25 languages. So, of course, lots of people, they're going to sneak read things. Everybody is breaking out of their own little shoebox and they're curious to see who knows what. And when it comes to the ET issue, there is no issue internationally more pressing and more secret that has the whole world leaders scrambling. So if this fellow from Colombia says uh, that Earth is a sacred place, he's, he's, it could be many ways. It makes you feel good, you want Earth to be sacred. But the Anunnaki say, we want this Earth to be sacred and depopulated because it's for us. So that is a different meaning of sacred, right? <laughs> Which meaning of sacred is it? And so this is where you cannot just use buzzwords. What do you mean, Mr. President, uh, uh, that the earth is sacred? Sacred for all of us? Or sacred to the gods? Or sacred for the world leaders? But it is still a start. He got the conversation going along the right track. Earth is incredibly valuable real estate. Who else? Question. Becky. Who over here? Becky. Becky. Can you talk 
talk about GMOs and Monsanto and what we do about our food now? It looks to be that you have many corporations on your world that are being established and run by off-planetary beings. They set up the ownership, the, how they want things to be, the profits go to them. Remember, even visitors are going to need money to build things. And Monsanto is evil personated on the planet because there is an agenda they have to, to eat away at the traditionally established living library. And they want to genetically modify things, round up, create poisons, destroy. It is, it's a very bad sign. Uh, the seeds, it is a very deep agenda to make it difficult for human life to survive and thrive on the planet. Uh, this is about a 50-year plan. And in the Anunnaki method of counting time, uh, 75 years is one week. 50 years, about five days. You understand? Yeah. So when you start to compare it to how much time they have to get things done, what's 50 years to the Anunnaki? They're, they're, they're changing things. Uh, they're rearranging Earth, uh, or they plan to, for their own agenda. Understand this. In the larger scheme of things, they're probably not going to succeed. Quality of life and the raising of consciousness to have the larger panorama <clears throat> will isolate them and disempower them. As soon as you know there's a magician or the tricks of the magician, you may be impressed with the tricks, but you know that they are tricks. Do you understand the difference? But if you see a magician and he pulls things out here and there, you can be in awe. And that's where you are moving to now, understanding the magician's tricks and sort of disconnecting or dis believing in much in the Anunnaki uh, construct of reality which benefits them. Who has a question? This is Wendy. 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 Uh, you said before that um, everything, all of the turmoil, turmoil on Earth is all on right on schedule. Yes, it's on schedule. Well, the chaos creates discomfort. And if you get caught up in the deceit and the chaos, it can be a downward spiral. But the chaos and deceit gets your attention and you say, what the heck is going on? And then it can create a healing and an integration if you say what is going on and you are willing to get the larger panorama. And, and back to Becky's question here, she, was it Becky? Yes. yes. So she was saying, what is Monsanto doing? They're creating a situation that really gets your attention, your food supply. And, and then Becky's saying, well, what do we do? You go back to a different type of living. You love the lives you live today. You have autos. You have food everywhere. You buzz in, someone preps it for you. If you have money, you can do whatever you want. But what if you had to to be alive and to have good mind and good life, you had to grow food or know who grew it. Yipes, there goes the fast pace, yes? Kaboom, it goes slower. And this is the solution you must have as to how uh, to find your way through the chaos that will stimulate you to become more aware so that you then can deal with these situations of how do we outsmart Monsanto? Well, you take ownership and you save your seeds, you grow your food, and you start to build a new type of lifestyle. You are just touching the fringes of it. Many of you will extend your lives because you are closer than close, on the verge, vergy verge, 
of these big breakthroughs coming through and they're already established. Very good-hearted people are being worked with to show the simplicity of how to heal the body and to extend its life by double perhaps. It's nothing compared to the Anunnaki but just imagine if everyone was that was over 50 was not even halfway through their life and we are not talking becoming old and decrepit but pretty much even youthing and getting a little younger and having a lot of vitality and some of you out of necessity staying because when people die boom this is how the Anunnaki get you you never live long enough to figure it out and so right now there is a time when many will die because of the poisons, uh, they don't know how to eat the right food, uh, etc. Yet others with a little money, a little savvy, a little right place, right time, will start to add things to their life and regenerate at least to some longer extension. We know this does not sound exciting to some people. And we know others are very excited about it. It will be a challenging time to sort through. Uh, just remember that in the larger scheme of things, there is and can be found a positive purpose to all events. And it is your task to assess the situation, truly, in its darkest elements, and then to conclude that there will be a gift within it. Otherwise, why would you participate in it? And the Anunnaki's hate this about you when you do it. Because you tap into the magic. And you then ruin their games. Because if you say it, it is abracadabra. And abracadabra is avracadavra from the old Aramaic, the language of biblical times. And it means I create as I speak. Wowie, wow, wow. Bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. <laughs> right? Yes. So it, this, the signs are all around you. But we are not going to penalize you or scold you for not getting it together because it truly, people, the energy that you are moving now and moving through, it's like every day you are picking up a boulder that weighs a few tons and you have to move this around this is the energy of the times it's there's a lot of help but this is the, the victory of your soul to move through this and uh, you will you absolutely will uh, we have great faith in that in your understanding and your ability to quickly change because we see what's coming and we give you hints about it and there's no particular total guarantee because you are unpredictable and this is uh, what confounds us and everyone about you it's also your greatest uh, wild card your unpredictability that is your ace in the game it's none of these beings including we know exactly when you are going to change your mind exactly when you are going to make up your mind and create an abracadabra and then the probabilities form around it and then you are growing in telepathic transmission power. You may not recognize it but your range of broadcast through your telepathic skills is clearer and deeper. So be careful what you are sending out and know that the power is there to, uh, to broadcast uh, on energetic level to many beings. Question? This is Asho. Over here, Asho, yes. <clears throat> I've been noticing within the last six or seven months how many extraordinary ahas there's been. Mm -hmm. Like going down the freeway and meeting somebody that you haven't seen for six months at a particular at a particular rest stop, driving by as they walk out of the car. So we call this a, a flutter of, of synchros. Mm -hmm. Right. There's just, and there's been like three or four major, like impossible things happening. And so when these things happen, what's your interpretation or what's your response besides the delight of seeing someone you haven't seen? Well, the first thing that you've said for so many years is be grateful. Ask what you're being shown. 
being grateful for it, thank you, and move on. And attempt, the hardest thing is to not figure it out. Attempt to make an explanation that would explain why it happened, because it's so, it's so enormously impossible. Yes. There's so, no way, I mean, it's like things are happening that are so unbelievable that it would be, you can't even think that you could figure it out. This is <laughs> remarkable that you are able to articulate this because this is happening for many people, yes? Yes. Yeah. All right, this means that you have been on pause hibernation rest mode at the after the end of the nano and there were reevaluations and the shufflings of probabilities and players uh, were all being mixed up we said last year was a year of decisions of letting things go and the, the flutter starts and the game is on and what this shows you but when you have these series of impossible so-called uh, events that line up and paths are crossed, it is a small indication to show you that you are being worked with, that you are being watched, and you are in the game. Do not give up. There's meaning to life, and there's good things that can lie ahead for you. That's part of what you are being reassured with. And it's happening for lots and lots of people. Yes, and this is, this is part of, 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 of understanding it. People who don't understand it, it frightens them a little bit. That's all right, though. Be grateful and say, all right, oh, I am being watched. This is fun. What good thing is next? It's sort of a, a precursor to other things that are going to come down so that if you can see there's connectivity for some mundane stuff, then there'll be some connectivity some, for some much, much bigger, non-mundane things. That's a hint. Anything else, Asho? Well, the other part of that is then to hold that and to know kind of what you said, and then to go home and then live a life where, you know... Dishes, you laundry, have yes. Things. You have to go to shows, you have to meet people, you have to deal with them. Your, your, yes, your this family. is... Your yes. family, you explain to them, and... I mean, you don't explain to them, but you just live, and it's like you become non-existent to the people around you. I mean, it's like you're not there. It's like I feel like people don't see, really see me. It's like I'm there, and yet I'm there physically, but that's as far as the... communication goes almost and so I want to just stay home to do what I do and be outside and make things and well many stuff. people are finding it you are describing your own personal process and your frustration that is long going uh, with your family and the people you surround yourself with who don't value what you are learning essentially yes yes and so what are you going to do about it you can't keep complaining about it. You either have to accept responsibility or be hushed about it. Why do you create a situation of frustration as you advance that you can't share it? You have your partner to share it with. Be grateful. And accept that the people that you love and that are part of your family, they're not interested. That's a tough one. It's very tough. You just let it go because you've been beating this drum for a long time. We hear the frustration and you will tell the same story again and again and no offense to you, but eventually it will make you sick because you think it has to change and it's not going to. You have predicated, we're using this because she's a wonderful example for many of you. She thinks that if that situation around her changes, and they value her word to make any difference what the word is about then she will be happy yipes <laughs> oh you didn't laugh at that that means it's everyone's issue <laughs> <laughs> it got you. you see 
we are dangerous because you think we don't see you. And that is part of our cleverness. We, we use our vehicle's body, our eyes are closed. We talk here, but we are pushing buttons here. We talk here, but we are getting you here. And you can't quite tell what we are up to. We wave our arms around and, and yet you pay attention, which is very good. One person's story is everyone's story. You must make peace with this. Because when you expect someone else to value you for what you are learning and who you are, and they don't, and you're holding out for it, and then you feel devalued inside or pushed on the shelf, uh, and you know you're not, you know you are smart and you're valuable, and then after a while the, the, the despair sets in. Despair is a very weakening of the immune system. Once you weaken your immune system, your chakras become vulnerable. And then things start happening through the chakras. So let it go. There were two big songs last year that came out by these rock and rollers. One was called Let It Go. That was from some movie called Freeze or something. And then there was another one by some rocker called Shake It Off. <laughs> but these are messages of today. Let it go, shake it off. You carry it around with you. You're going to make yourself sick, people. And there's no need to be sick. There's no need to have any diseasement. All things can be healed. Mm -hmm. All right, Asho? Thank you. You're very welcome. But you blabbed it for others, so <laughs> we'll give you a half of a gold star for being so brave. <laughs> we hear you laughing back there. This is good. <laughs> you like these belly laughs. So. All right, uh, we don't have too much time left. We'll go to this side of the room. Now, who has a question over here? Felice? Who is it? Felice. Yeah. All right, Felice, go ahead. I heard something weird uh, a couple of days ago. It said that uh, the nuclear code had been called to bomb Russia from our side, and uh, the naval commandant that got the order Refused. wouldn't do it. Yes. And so they took her away. But uh, It's also uh, just like uh, how a few years ago uh, it, uh, Obama's administration the scooby doop was that they were going to do a nuke on um, South Carolina, yeah. Charleston, South Carolina. And then uh, they got rid of the uh, nuclear engineers and people involved in the military. You see how they're making sweeps? Because the people resist. They want, they want to keep the country together. And some of them know that they are dark forces. They have no idea, many of them, how deep this is. So the codes were released and someone would not push the buttons. Yeah. Let's say this. Last year, we suggested to people, a year ago and more, that the tensions on the planet have been building to such a great extent that there are probable worlds where nuclear detonations did go off. You and we keep working in the world where forces are preventing this from occurring. And in the last few weeks or months, many, many people have come forward to say that World War III has started. That's their belief. And they want to push it. Some of them saying it by observation, and some of them are saying it by uh, uh, enthusiasm. And as they said, uh, when Hitler invaded, what was it, Austria, Czechoslovakia, some such, in 19, or Poland, 1939, uh, people didn't know really for sure that was the beginning of the war. The buttons have been pushed by some already, and nothing's happened. And again, this is why we've said that balls of lights and weird things uh, are moving through the various governmental complexes above ground, in underground, etc. And many people are showing the ultimate courage of they're the heretics and they dare to stand for truth in a time of tremendous deceit. And it is interesting that those who do speak the truth are the heroes and they will be often uh, slammed and destroyed by those who want to trick you. Continue, please, please. Well, that was it. 
on that. But that's a big. That's it. <laughs> Imagine if he was delivering the nightly news. That's it. <laughs> now, let's think about this for a moment. If Felice was on the mainstream media and he just presented this to people and we were the commentary and it was okay to do this and then we said, well, what else? And he says, well, that's it. And then there was a silence. The audience might pay attention. <laughs> Because it wouldn't be this phony delivery. It would be real discussion. The real discussions happen all the time in the dream states. And sometimes you're going to find this year, you will wake up exhausted. Especially after this weekend. Not because you're partying too much, but because you went to another level this weekend. You are now informed. And as you are informed, it makes you more interesting to work with. And that means you are most easily worked with when you are in the dream state. So if you wake up exhausted and you feel drained, then tell them to stop and give you a rest and work with someone else for a while and then do any type of restorative energies. Use aromatherapies to restore your energy, use the earth itself, uh, body work, sound, uh, all these things, uh, especially any type of spinal adjustment. You're going to get great mileage out of spinal adjustment because the spine is the body's antenna. That's good. I do have just one other thing to say. Oh, please, go ahead. I was uh, outside the other day and I looked out in that direction and there was a cloud there. Which direction is that? North. North. All right. Good. Right? North. And there was a cloud there. There was no other clouds there. And it was in the shape of a huge craft just Len sitting there. They are called lenticular clouds. Yeah. It, yes. And, and when I saw it, I thought, wow, everyone's coming for this weekend. Ooh. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. That's a good way of saying it. They are an interdimensional <laughs> phenomena, meaning some of them easily move into or outside of the visible spectrum. Let's say that way. That on the electromagnetic spectrum, the energies move from very slow to very fast, from radio waves to high dense gamma waves. Two thirds of the way across the electromagnetic spectrum is the visual spectrum. And we have often said if the entire electromagnetic spectrum is 36 inches, you detect one inch <laughs> visually. And you are now being amplified to detect more psychically. And some people, even their visual acuity, is being drastically altered now. And this year, there will be a big widening of the panorama of your acuity of what you will start to see. Now you see the clouds, but in a little while, you will see the craft. Some people go out at night and they look at different goggles, they see them. Some people just take pictures during the day with their camera. They develop them, there's something there. There's a lot of buzz happening around your world at this time. There are many who want to start the war, and there are others who want stabilization, stabilization, even the land, because the energies are so intense that Earth herself may have to move to integrate it. I have a question. Who is it? Barbara. Loud and clear? This is Barbara. Barbara, it's all right. not quite following the same topic, but... Um, as far as death and dying goes and soul transformation, what I've noticed is, is that the Tibetan system has a way of opening the chakras and in order so that the soul can more completely leave the body, as does the traditional shamanic way of uh, assisting someone through death. Is there an actual valid need for that at this point in time? Or is that some can be released as a practice. It can be helpful if you have that belief system. Mm -hmm. The problem now on your world, or the challenge now on your world, is that all the structures, whether they are Tibetan or Christian or Islamic or Judaic or even shamanic, 
it's all a result of of programming and influencing from the last 500,000 years and things before that, but your big job is to figure out only a half a million years right now. <laughs> That's it. And then, well, more will come later, of course. And so, and then most of the things that you are dealing with on the planet have been reinstituted and established over the last. 12,000 years, a demise 12, 13,000 years ago, and then a reestablishment over the last 10,000 years. Practices, abilities, after great destruction, and many things lost. Many things lost. So you develop systems, and the problem is, is that you do things a certain way, so you think that's the only way to do it. And then times change, or some renegade comes along and says, well, do it this way. And then that way works, because things change, and reality conforms to your beliefs and expectations. And your belief and expectations are always resting places that give you respite and security for a while to operate within certain reliable structures. If everything was always in uncertainty, who would want to be here? You desire stability and organization, and yet the stability the world has been based on is, is relatively uh, phony and falling apart. So even the death and dying process is up for grabs. Don't be so concerned about it, but have your clarity of mind ready that if you are going to help others, that you are going to know what to do. and It will unfold for you. You have much study ahead of you. All right, this side of the room. Mimi. Mimi, welcome and ask your question. Thank you. I stumbled upon some monatomic gold in a powder form and some liquid gold in a spagyric alchemical. I don't really know how to use this stuff. Gold is also the Anunnaki uh, we're not entirely honest with you, of course, uh, with their uh, um, stories uh, and their need for gold. Uh, gold is a preservative of sorts in some ways. It has properties uh, in the monatomic range where it can be ingested and can be utilized to expand certain uh, types of consciousness. Uh, it's long been rumored that it's the powder, the food, the gift of the gods, uh, all kinds of things. If you have it in your hands, you're not going to have something that the gods had of long ago. Uh, believe us when we say they are not going to permit humans to be able to figure out that type of chemistry. Uh, so there does not look as if there is any harm in experimenting with it, but it's not going to make any great big difference. We are certain there are many people in the room who have come across it and experimented with it and didn't notice any big deal. Uh, actually, you would uh, get a better, better run for your money by taking probiotics yeah. uh, and balancing out your guts and putting the brains back in your guts than you are going to get at this point from ingesting uh, the monatomic gold. All right? The, the people who do this research, they are on to something, uh, but the results are being prevented from coming into humankind. In other words, it would be like giving children guns and then saying, uh, now, don't point these at each other. <laughs> You laugh, but you know how kids are. Yeah, okay, we won't. And as soon as you leave the room, they do what they're not supposed to do. Whether it's rubber bands shooting at each other, spitballs, it makes no difference. So humankind is being prevented on some level from advancing too far, getting themselves in big trouble, yet being pushed uh, un endlessly to grow faster and faster, but still it's a slow rate for the human development because the neural system has to convey so much data and it needs to rest, it needs restoration, it needs to heal and develop and you all go too fast 
when you all don't take care, you don't take well enough care of your physical body. That's our scolding for you. So we want you to take a little bit better care, and some of you a lot better care, of your biological being. You cannot be here. No body, no be here. That's our prophecy. And so please, friends, understand that you are moving at a very rapid rate in awareness. And so you must slow down and be very, very clear about life. Your big job is to lift the burdens off yourself, to enjoy these wildcard times, to learn to say N-O, to learn to make brownies with grace, and to feel good about your life. This is the victory of humankind. And you have our support and many other support in this process. So tonight, dream big. Remember, if you are staying here, ooh, the Red Rocks will be working with you. And the sacred timelines will open. And those who came here from long ago to treat this as a sacred place, they know you are here now. We opened that doorway. So they will work with you tonight in the dream state. Be prepared to be advanced to another level and a grander panorama of understanding. Create the best, dear friends. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.